Do you take advantage of the bulk editing features that Etsy offers for your listings? The options may be a little bit limited, but the bulk editing features that Etsy does offer do come in handy in some situations. So let's take a look at a couple examples of when those bulk editing features can be useful. So one thing that Etsy does not do a fantastic job of for sellers is giving us bulk editing abilities for a lot of different things. I'm not just talking about listings. When it comes to things like our shipping profiles as well, there really are not many options for you to bulk edit. That being said, it is helpful to be aware of the bulk editing features for your listings that you do have because in certain scenarios, they can still come in handy. So first of all, you wanna to come to your listings page on your Etsy seller dashboard. And once you're there, look for the top left corner of that page, there is a checkbox available. And when you check it off, it will highlight all of the listings on that page. The first thing for you to be aware of is that there's a drop down arrow here next to the checkbox. It does also tell you right there the number of listings that you have selected. So it's telling me I have seven listings selected and we're in my POD Insights sort of laboratory Etsy shop here where I create listings to make my tutorial videos. So I don't have too many listings here, but if you have several pages of listings, it's going to by default select only all of the listings on that first page. And what you're going to want to do if you intend to select all of your listings in your entire shop is click on this drop down arrow next to that number. And if you do have multiple pages, you will see an additional option here to select all listings on all pages. So if that's what you're intending to do, make sure you do that before you actually make any edits. You can also select individual listings if you don't intend to select all of your listings. So for example, on this page, if I wanted to edit the t-shirts that are on this page, but nothing else, look down at the bottom left corner of the individual listings. There's a checkbox there as well. So I could select just these four t-shirt listings and then come back up and use my bulk editing options. And again, in the corner, it tells me I have four listings selected. Now you can also filter the listings that are showing on this page before you use that checkbox to select them all. And that's another way to get more specific and only select certain listings from your shop. The first example that I'm gonna show you of using the bulk editing features is going to be to assign a shop section, which then we can actually use to filter this page to make additional bulk edits. For example, I don't have any shop sections already set up in my shop. None of these seven listings are currently assigned to a section, but I've decided that I want to actually create sections by product. So I wanna create a t-shirt section, a mug section, and so on for my shop and organize my listings that way. So on the right side of the screen, I'm gonna find the sections area here. I'm gonna click on manage and you're gonna see I've created a section here for t-shirts. You can also click the add section button to create additional sections. So I'm gonna create a second one here for mugs. Now you can see I've got two sections available. And if I close that out and come back to the drop down here, you'll see currently I have no section. I have seven listings that don't have a section. I don't have any in t-shirts. I don't have any in mugs. So now to actually move my listings into those sections, I'm going to use the bulk editing feature. Now, because I only have seven listings here and they're all on one page, I can just manually check the box for my four t-shirts and move them into the t-shirt section. But if you have a lot more than this, another option would be to use the search feature at the top of the page to find only the t-shirt listings and then select them all. Now the caveat here is you need to search for a word that is present on every t-shirt list if you want to actually get them all. So I just searched for shirt and it pulled all four of my t-shirt listings. So as long as, you know, say the word t-shirt or shirt is present on all of your t-shirt listings, that would bring them into the search results here. However, if you also sell, say, sweatshirts and you use the word shirt in those listings, it's also going to bring all of those. So as far as shop sections go, it is kind of best to set those up earlier before you have hundreds of listings because getting them all into the appropriate section, it can take a little bit of work if you have that many listings already and there are common words so that you can't really filter the listings that well. You can also filter by the shipping profile. So let's say you had a separate t-shirt profile like I do already, you could also filter filter the listings by the shipping profile as long as it's different than all of your other listings. So if you have a t-shirt shipping profile that you only use for t-shirts, that could be another way to filter this page down and only show your t-shirts. But whichever way you use, whether you manually select them on the page or whether you use the search or one of the other filters, once you get it down to just your t-shirts, use that checkbox 
to select them all. Again, if there's more than one page, use the drop down arrow and make sure that you've selected the all pages option as long as you know that it's only the t-shirts or whatever type of product you're actually working with. Then once we do that, now we can come to the editing options drop down box here. This is where all of your bulk editing tools live. These are all the different things that Etsy allows you to bulk edit when you have more than one listing selected. And the first example we're going to do is the very last option on the list, and that is change section. So we've selected, in this case, just four listings, but you could have hundreds of listings selected here. And we will use change section to then move these listings to our t-shirt shop section. So just select the t-shirt section that we created and click apply. You will get a success message there. And then once we do that, we come back to our view of all listings. Now, if we scroll down on the right side and we go to the sections little drop down, we will see t-shirts. Now we have four there that were moved to the t-shirt section. So I can select that filter and now that filters my listings down to just my t-shirts. Shop sections can be very useful for this purpose, for filtering your listings, because some of the other bulk editing features are going to be things that you may only want to do to certain sections of your shop or certain types of products. For example, now that I filtered this page to just my t-shirts, I can come back, select all listings, and go back to my editing options. And now maybe there's something I want to do that is specific to just my t-shirts. For example, if I decide for some reason that I want to create a new shipping profile for my just my t-shirts, and for some reason I'm not going to edit the existing one, I'm going to create an additional one, you can then use the bulk editing feature to change the shipping profile for all of those selected listings. So we filtered our listings down to just our t-shirts, we selected them all, now we use the editing option for shipping profile File, and now I can come in and select whatever shipping profile I want to assign to all of my t-shirt listings. It even gives you a summary of what the processing time and the shipping destinations are in that shipping profile. And then we simply click apply and it will apply that shipping profile to all of these selected listings. Another reason why it helps to have shop sections by product is because sometimes you may need to update your pricing and occasionally, not always, but occasionally, the price that you need to adjust happens to be the same dollar amount for all sizes of a product. Now, again, it doesn't always work out that way. A lot of the time, you might need to increase your small through extra large sizes by, say, a dollar. Maybe you need to increase your 2XL and 3XL sizes by $3. So the bulk editing feature doesn't really help you in that scenario. But let's just say we had to increase our t-shirt prices for all sizes by $1. Again, what I'm going to do is come to my listings page and I'm going to use the sections filter on the right to filter this page down to just my t-shirts. Then I'm going to use the checkbox to select them all. And again, make sure I select all pages if I do have multiple pages of t-shirts, then come to the editing options and find the edit prices option. Select that and now you get another dropdown where you can indicate that you want to increase, decrease, set a new price or do a percentage increase or decrease. Now for a product like t-shirts, we don't wanna just do the set new amount because that will set one price for all product variants. And we have different prices for small through extra large, 2XL, 3XL. You might even do different prices by all size. So you definitely don't want to set one price for every single size. But let's go back to the example that I just gave a second ago. Let's say that all of our t-shirt size variants need to increase in price by $1. So we can use the increase by amount option and we can just put in $1 in this field and it will now tell us that, hey, it was $24.99 to $27.99 based on size. Now it's gonna be $25.99 to $28.99, again, based on size. So it's gonna preserve that price differentiation that we had in our variance by size. It's just gonna add a dollar to every price we already had. And it's gonna do that for all the listings that we had selected. So we click apply, and now all of our t-shirt listings have increased in price by $1, and that differentiation by size is still intact. Now again, I know that Usually when there's price increases, we may not have the exact same dollar amount increase that we need to make to all the sizes. So you can't always do it that way because the bulk editing tool does not let you differentiate between certain variants. So let's say, you know, we needed to increase our small through extra large by a dollar, but we needed to increase 2XL and 3XL by $2. In that case, you would have to go into each individual listing, scroll down to your product variants, and within your product variant section, you would have to go through 
through and adjust those prices. So that's one of the limitations that I alluded to earlier when I said that Etsy doesn't make it super easy for us to do some of the things that we need to do from a bulk editing standpoint. But it does still help in those scenarios where you do need to edit prices for like a section or a type of product by a fixed amount. Let's do one other example of using the bulk editing feature. And for this one, we're going to actually edit our listing descriptions. I showed how to do this in my Q4 prep video, but in case you haven't caught that one, let's take a look at an example of doing this here. Let's say that you want to add your return policy to the bottom of all of your listings. It's not in there now, and you just want to throw a blurb at the bottom of the description field in all of your listings that indicates to the customer what your return policy is. And for this example, we're just going to assume that the return policy is the same for all products in the shop being print-on-demand sellers. But if you do have different return policies for different products, you can filter this page again just like we did before by using the shop sections or the search. So let's select all of our listings by checking the box in the corner and then using the drop down to make sure we've selected all listings on all pages. Then let's come over to the editing options and we will select edit descriptions. Now you have some options here of what you want to do with your descriptions. You can add to the front, add to the end, find and replace. You can delete or you can reset the descriptions. We're gonna talk about find and replace in just a moment, but first we need to add our return policy to the end of each description. So I'm gonna select add to end. Now, if you have something pre-written, you can just paste it right in this field, but if I don't, so I'm gonna actually type it in here. Okay, so I wrote my return policy in here, but I wanna point something out. Take note of the sample that they give you because they show you an example of what this is going to look like in a product description. When they say add to end, they really mean add to end. They don't even create a new blank line for for you. If you take a look at the last bullet point and they added my return policy to that sentence, they did not even put a space in there. What you need to do is come up to the field here again and actually hit the return or enter key to space it down. And the live sample below will update and show you how that's going to look. And I actually want a blank line in between. I want a space. So I'm going to hit enter again and space it down. Now it's the way I want it to look. So double check to make sure everything is spelled correctly. There's no spelling or grammar errors there. And then we will hit apply and it will add this to the bottom of the description for all listings in my shop. All right, there we go. So now we've added that return policy to all of my listings without having to edit them individually. So that's a big time saver. But let's say that at some point I realize, hey, I wanna change my return policy description. I wanna add something to it or I wanna replace a sentence. How can I do that in an efficient manner? Do I have to delete the whole thing and add it all again? Well, that is where the find and replace feature comes in. So again, let's start by selecting all of our listings on all pages or at least however many listings we added that to. We'll come back to our editing options. We will go to edit descriptions again. And this time we will use the find and replace option. So on this one, you have two fields. You have what you're looking for and what you want to replace it with. So what you wanna do is of course, come down and they give you a sample again. So take a look at the sample here. We've got our return policy at the bottom of the screen. Let's pretend what I wanna do is alter that sentence that says, so we do not accept returns or exchanges. Now I'm just making up a sample here. So this isn't gonna be a real big change. So let's say that I, instead of that, I wanted to say, so we are not able to accept returns or exchanges. So what I'm gonna to have to do is type in the exact thing that I'm looking for in the final find box. So you can type that in or you can actually just highlight that section that you want to find and copy it and then paste it in the find field. Now we want to start typing what we want to replace it with on the right. And you will see that start happening in the live sample. So now I've replaced that sentence with, so we are not able to accept returns or exchanges. And in the live sample below, you can see exactly how it looks. Make sure that you don't have any odd spaces, either a missing space or too many spaces. Make sure your punctuation doesn't need to be adjusted. I think that looks like it exactly fits the way it's supposed to. So now we can hit apply and that will update that sentence in all of the listings that I have selected. So there you go. That's a couple examples of using the bulk listing editing features that Etsy does offer and a couple ways that you can filter your listings down so that you can edit certain ones, but not others. So I hope this was helpful for you. Let me know in the comments if you have any tips to share with everybody about taking advantage of these bulk editing features. And don't forget to hit that like button if this was helpful for you so that YouTube can show the video to more people. And subscribe to the POD Insights channel if you haven't already so you can be notified when I come out with future videos. Thanks everybody, see you next time.